I've got a little break between students today and just wanted to uh, show you guys a little about doing the shifting exercises that are part of the uh, Jeff Radetich method. And these you can do any speed. You can add vibrato or not add vibrato. You can use almost any Boeing. Um, but I'm going to show you the basic one that's, that's a good part of any double bass warm-up routine. Um, practically at any age. With the younger students, um, it's particularly fun just to have them, you know, that, that sort of silliness um, at first, just to kind of get them move it around and, and that sort of thing. But in the meantime, um, even at the beginning stages in middle school, you can have them um, just shift up the, the notes of the D scale as, you know, the, the kids learn. dramatic with the smear. And make sure that their thumb follows along roughly behind the second finger. Some people like to have it kind of go behind the first. Depends on a lot of times eventually on the size of bass that you use. A lot of people who play larger basses, unlike myself, like to use the thumb behind the first finger, but there's really no wrong way because almost every bass is crafted differently as it is. My own personal bass is a Hermann Lowendahl from um, 1890, uh, made in Berlin, and it's a solo parlor size, so it's a bit odd. So when I'm out teaching, I usually run for the three-quarter size basses. I don't really, um, you know, run for the big, massive, uh, full-size extension and the whole those things just feel humongous to me. So, anyway, that said, so I'm going to show you a run, uh, just a one-to-one -one shift up A major, and uh, as you get into, you know, the advanced stages uh, with the youngins, you can go through the one-to-one, -one, you can go one-to-two, one-to-four, and of course once you get past up F natural, uh, F sharp area, that's really you want to kind of start really just using third because you just run out of space basically. So anyway. And you can add vibrato if you want. I just kind of do it by habit. And you want to keep this part of the thumb right here on the back part of the neck. You don't want to let it slide around this way because then they're really just fighting going like this rather than right here on the ends like it needs to. Some people, they might have figured out a mathematical formula. I just kind of, I don't know, just kind of do a feel for it. And so whatever's comfortable for you, as long as it's correct, of course. And you want to really land on the first and the last notes to really get that interval. <laughs>
students, you know, on into high school, then of course you keep going the next doctor, the next doctor, the next doctor until you just run out of room. So uh, the next one is one to four. Obviously, the first two notes, there's nothing to smear to, it's just one to four. But after that, you have that uh, little bit of movement there. <laughs> shifts is not only playing in tune with the note that you're going to but coming back to the A. You can always find that by having this open A string ring. Okay, And I believe in the newer edition of the Brad Titch Method books I believe all these shifts and run are done in B flat. I, I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to double check on that. I don't remember. It's been a while. But anyway, coming back to this A is so important. One thing you can do is there are plenty of apps out there, things that were not available when, when I was coming up, that um, it'll, like for instance, um, I think it's called Pitch Lab is one of them, but there's a, a billion free tuners out there that you can actually do these exercises with and you can watch your pitch and your intonation for each note that you're going to. And even if it's a, a stranger scale, that you're shifting through, that you're working on, um, you can, and you're not quite, you know, haven't quite dug into your earworm yet, you can still use that as a visual tool to kind of match where you're at. And what it does is that connects all your, your kinesthetic and your, your neurons and everything, your brain all together, and it just makes it a, a much more exponential experience as far as getting it. For example. <laughs> strings it's really good to get comfortable on at least these two strings particularly in the G right away um, when you're doing these things but anyway so that's kind of everything in a nutshell just to have an idea of uh, how these things work and uh, how I try to go about teaching them and, and helping the, the younger students with those and it's a blast and it's enjoyable and we'll see you next time